We're gonna finish the series, Finish Strong. There's a great miracle that we're gonna discover today on In Grace. The series Finish Strong is about my dad, Dr. James A. Scudder Sr., and miracles that happened in his life. My dad served the Lord faithfully, and he saw God do many great and mighty things. We're gonna show you some of those things today, and you're gonna be amazed, but we weren't expecting to be standing at my dad's grave when I filmed the story. He did cross the finish line, though, and he finished strong because of the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My dad's body will one day rise because of his faith in Jesus. Born in 1946, born again in 1968. Called to preach, fording a river in Kentucky, called to Chicago by a seemingly random comment of a Bible college professor, my dad's life seemed full of unusual events that bordered on the miraculous. In our final episode, Miracles Abound, as a fledgling church plant in Chicago begins to really take off. So you go from a storefront in Chicago, eventually out to the suburbs, the first property that we had was in Palatine. Tell us the story of how we found that and the miracle. Well, I was with Mike Floyd and we, we were just praying and praying and praying. We have to get a spot. You know, we were too dumb to know better, so we run an ad in the newspaper. It said, small, independent church looking for one acre. Nothing. About three weeks later, this realtor called me, and he said, I've got a spot. It's got a house. It's two and a half acres. So we go out there, and there's this property. It had all these junk cars. It was one of those places. But we bought it. So we wanted to put up a building. Well, now no one's going to loan a loan and then on top a building. So I had this friend named Braun that had his own factory. And I'd been going down there and speaking for him, and he really liked me. So I thought, well, if he could co-sign, we could get the loan and put up the first building. So I go down there. He said, well, what are your plans? I said, well, I just want you to co You came to see me without plans? How are you going to pay for it? And I was just floored. I couldn't talk. He said, you go out of here and come back with plans. And uh, so I go back, and I tell him the situation and what I want to do and how I'll pay for it. He calls his bank and says, I want to co-sign for Jim Scudder's loan. You go out there and meet him at, the, at his property. So this banker comes out, and he says, you know, Mr. Scudder, this is not bankable. I said, it doesn't have to be bankable. Mr. Braun is co-signing, and he laughs, and he gave us a loan. So we built our first building. Your ministry has always been about people, but usually buildings are an indication of people getting saved and growing. And so the next building was adjacent. Along the way, you started seeing the value of using people in the church to help build the buildings. We did whatever we could, some things we couldn't do. But each time we did a new building, we did more of it and more of it. You have now two nice buildings in Palatine. I remember that little house that we were living in at the beginning, and they later had to tear that down, saying that wasn't fit for humans to live in. When we sold it to the county, they came out in the paper and said, not fit for human habitation. That's where we and That was our house. That was our house. We just didn't know. So we're outgrowing it now, though. Ministry is 
blossoming. So what do you do when you well, were kind of landlocked? We decided we got to find a bigger piece, way bigger. We're looking at a place and it was 20 acres. We came up with an agreement to go buy it. So I get in there and the guy says to me, he said, we've had to raise it. Now I have a thing. If someone changes the deal, there's no deal. I said, well, there's no deal. And we got up. He said, no, no, sit down. I'll, I'll go back. No, you won't. If you're untrustworthy, you'll be untrustworthy and I'm not buying. And he's just looking at me and we're like crushed because this is a great place. Yeah, it's hard to walk away from that because it was, it was nice. So then this guy in our church named Jim Rendy and he finds 40 acres for the same exact price as 20 acres. And that's where we're at now. Now we actually own 45 acres. We got five more. And I remember getting that and thinking, am I nuts again? How are we ever, ever going to fill this property? By then, we're building everything. And, you know, we have a school. I had to get it done. I had no choice. It had to be done. I remember this miracle like it was yesterday. With the pressure to open the school on time, Dad makes a bold decision. He orders concrete for a Saturday pour, even with a forecast of torrential rain. This order will cost thousands and no refund for bad weather. Would God honor this man's faith? I called the company. They said, Pastor, you understand, it's called for solid rain, that if we come out there, some days we can manipulate the concrete to other places. If you have a problem, you don't have to pay. But if we do it on a Saturday and we pour and it rains, it's over. You're going to have to eat it, chop up the concrete, and bring in another concrete. Well, we didn't have that kind of money. Couldn't be done. When I was heading there, just rain coming down in buckets. And it's just no way you can pour concrete today. And I tell you, son, that was a day of solid storms, lightning, all the torrential rains. The concrete trucks had to stop. The rain was so hard that they couldn't drive. And it rained all around our 40 acres. And it pulled into the property and it's like, it's dry maybe a little mist or something like that. And then you look up in the sky and all the time that we were pouring, is, is, there is a hole up in the sky where it, the clouds were moving in and they just kind of go around, come back together. After, and, and the hole was right above the property. It never rained on our property. These concrete guys, you know, and they're pretty tough guys. And they're opening their doors and falling to the ground and, and say, man, this will make a believer out of anybody. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, okay, you guys had the faith to show up to do the job. I do the, the work up here to keep the rain off of you. The guy said, you know, it'd be nice to have a sprinkle right now because it would help set the concrete. I can't believe I did. I said, God, okay, let it sprinkle. And it sprinkled. Now, before anybody gets the wrong idea, I could have a church picnic and I could pray. And believe me, God's not going to do it. He's going to have fun watching me squirm. But if it had rained that day, there would have been no more Quentin Road. It would have been the end. And God never lets anything that what we call really hurts you. He showed us that day that He's the God of gods and King of kings and Lord of lords. It was a fabulous day. Do you want to finish strong? Contact me right now and I'll send you this Finish Strong commemorative bookmark for free. Then every time you open your Bible, you'll be reminded that God wants you to never give up. Call our unforgettable number 1-800-78-GRACE or 
order on our secure website, ingrace.tv. You will also be blessed when you read Dr. Scudder's amazing autobiography and watch this four-part full-length DVD series. Support the work that he started, and let's all finish strong. Another building project then comes along and uh, this one was the biggest one that you've ever attempted, that we've ever attempted. And this is a different type of a building. This is a steel building. There's another pretty major event that happened on the day of hanging those trusses. We got the biggest crane that was on wheels and we we're trying to do the first truss. And the first truss, these are steel trusses and they weighed 8,000 pounds each, four tons each. Now, how do you hang that first truss? Most people would hire a company that erects buildings and they know how to do all this stuff. But again, you were in a position where we couldn't. Well, and this crane company should have known how to erect it, but they didn't. How to rig the... So trust. I bought, I always overdid everything for safety. So I bought all these come-alongs and we we're gonna have to anchor them to the floor and tighten it to hold that first truss. Well, they came to lift the truss and the truss is bending like spaghetti. That day, we were either gonna move forward, there was gonna be beams in the air, or at the end of the day, nothing was gonna have happened. It just was an absolute disaster. The trusses are twisting. They're sounding like they're going to just snap in pieces. And our hearts just sank. It was almost one of those moments where everybody was thinking the same thing, like, what do we do now? But nobody wanted to say it. And I, for the first time, I thought, I've bitten off more than I can chew. And then all of a sudden, Dr. Scudder said, okay, everybody, shut everything down. Go find a place to pray. Then we'll come back together and we'll work this out. We all found a place, we came back together, we came up with a plan. We know that plan was of God because it worked. So they all separated and prayed alone. And came back and this guy, Ted Crowley, and he says, I think I know how to do it. As the lift comes, I will crank the come-alongs instead of the two pickup points with the crane I will come along with two more points. I said, well, let's try it. So he goes and we lift and as a crane lifts, he, he goes up and he cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks and it goes up perfect. So then we get it hanging. So the next one, we do the come alongs each time, but it goes up quickly and we tie the two together. Now, once they're tied together, Every other truss is a piece of cake. It's a day that we will never ever forget. Our lives are forever changed because of looking to our pastor at that moment and he said, let's go to the Lord. God, this is in your hands. You also started some pretty significant ministries. One is a school that has become with the preschool the largest in the country or the world. But see, when, when you, precept upon precept and grow a little here, there, a little and a little here, a little there, you're going to have solid people. Mm -hmm. So now the preschool, because people would bring their kids and they'd say, I've never seen people like this because mm -hmm. they're being fed the Word of God. It makes better people. So it just started growing and growing. And, you know, we get up to 1800. That's how we've been able to go out and try to reach this world. You also started Dayspring Bible College. What do you feel when you get emails and pictures back from overseas and missionaries, graduates have gone out, started churches and winning souls? What does that feel like to you to see that fruit? It's the happiest joy there is. You also started this ministry in grace. It was called the Quentin Road Bible Hour and then Victory in Grace. I was on vacation down here in Florida and I just started feeling this, I have to go TV. 
So I went to a friend of mine that was in Athens, Georgia, Yankee Arnold, and he had a, a TV ministry, and he had these little cameras. So I went and looked and saw what he had had. If I had gone to Dr. Stanley's first, his room was bigger than our whole building. I wouldn't have done it, but I go to Yankees, and I said, wow, we can do this. So I go to my board. I said, we can get started. And I said, the cameras would be about 20,000. They said, no, Pastor, we don't do anything halfway. We're going to go with the best cameras, and we'll, no matter what it costs. And we wound up about a quarter of a million just starting out. God is blessed. God always blesses faith. Now, He doesn't bless what you call stupid faith. If I had tried to build the big building before we built our first building out of that property, we would have fallen flat and God wouldn't have picked us up. How important is it that we commit now to finishing strong? Well, I think everything is that we finish. You know, I could have quit and everybody that followed me say, well, if he can't do it, how can I do it? I'm so glad I listened to the Lord and did these interviews before dad passed away. I'm also thankful for a godly pastor named Randy Ford. He became dad's pastor and friend in dad's final years. I'll be honest, I was so absolutely overwhelmed and honored that a man of his character and prestige and notoriety would hang out with somebody like me. He said, Brother Ford, I want you to understand, I have got your back. The verse that comes to mind when, when it comes to Dr. Scudder, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I don't know that I've ever met a man stronger than him after all that he had been through in health-wise and ministry and just to strengthen him that, that I stood in admiration of the kind of quality that this man was. As we wrap up the series, I want you to see an amazing clip from Dad's retirement service. We surprised Dad when we found a long-lost friend named Paul Chargelaw. He and Dad had not seen each other for over 40 years. But you thought never you'd dare ever see me again, did you? <laughs> and uh, somewhere along the line in Chicago, Fullerton Avenue, I crossed path with Jim. And uh, and he goes to me, you know, uh, would you like to know how to get to heaven? I said, sure. He goes, uh, do you know you're a sinner? Uh, no question there. Do you know sinners can't go to heaven? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, whoever believeth in him can have eternal life. So God sent his son to die for your sins. You go, okay, that makes sense, okay. So I go, what do you have to do? He goes, well, you don't have to do anything. That was the only right answer. You it would have worked with me. He goes, all you have to do is trust Christ as your Savior. Because it's by grace that you are saved. You can never work your way to heaven. I got the message and he led me to Christ. And if I wasn't the first person in Chicago. <laughs> that he led to Christ. I was definitely one of the first. And what I remember is that I felt love acceptance, and most of all, I remember him being my best friend when I needed him. Thank you. God bless you as you journey on. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. As I say those words, I have chills right now. Because of Jesus, he is the resurrection, he is the life. Because of his power over death, so can I have power over death and I'll be able to see my daddy again. Have we all sinned? If there's anybody here that's never sinned, I won't ask that, I know that. We all have. 
You say, well, what makes the difference between being saved and being lost? What? Whosoever believeth in him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned. You know, if I were to die right now, I know I'm going to heaven. Do you know it? I want to show you this. I do this every Sunday. I'm not doing this because this is our first Sunday. I've done it every Sunday since I've been a preacher. Because I don't know a better way to make the gospel clear. This hand right here represents you and me, and this billful represents sin. God says, I love you, but I hate your sin. To go to heaven, you've got to be sinless. This hand right here represents the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he, God, hath made him Christ to be sin for us that we could be made the righteousness of God in Him. You see that? I'm going to heaven because God now sees me with the blood of Jesus, and He sees me and Christ as being equal without sin. You say, that's impossible. No, well, it's the greatest news in all the world. He sees us being perfectly cleansed. You don't go to heaven because you're a good Methodist or good Presbyterian or good Church of Christ. You go to heaven because you've been born again. One simple condition for salvation. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear the grave. Jesus paid your sins, all of your sins on the cross. And if you'll accept him by faith, you will have everlasting life. And I know my dad would say, a huge amen right now. You can't earn it, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you were to die right now, where would you go? You better be ready. Listen, don't wait to try to get ready at the end. Get ready right now, because you don't know how long you have. Do you want to finish strong? Contact me right now and I'll send you this Finish Strong commemorative bookmark for free. Then every time you open your Bible, you'll be reminded that God wants you to never give up. Call our unforgettable number 1-800-78-GRACE or order on our secure website ingrace.tv. You will also be blessed when you read Dr. Scudder's amazing autobiography and watch this four-part full-length DVD series. Support the work that he started, and let's all finish strong.